Hey everybody, we're going to look at Aftertouch right now. Now, Aftertouch is the ability for some MIDI keyboards, if this capability is there, to after you push and hold a note, you can add additional pressure and it will send MIDI data to the destination instrument. So for instance, I've got RetroSynth pulled up, just going to play a note. And I'm going to push a little harder at the very end. And it opens up the filter. So it's real easy to use if the keyboard has it. This keyboard is the Axiom 49, and so it's not like a new keyboard or anything. It's actually getting up there in years, but it works just great for this. So what we're gonna do is show you just a couple ways you can use this type of feature. Now, first of all, I will say that this is channel after touch, which means that if I hold down a chord and then another note someplace else, and then push down on that one note, it controls, it has one aftertouch reading, which is the aftertouch which has the highest value. So it opens it for all of them. Now I'll also say that it works by default in this case. Now the Axiom 49 is a keyboard that Logic recognizes and will automatically assign various parameters, but aftertouch is something which is uh, typically just recognized on various functionality. But we can change it. Now, let me show you how to do that real quick. So for instance, instead of that cutoff, say that I want to change one of our other controls here in our simple view. So we have, the, let's see, any one of these, sign level, stereo spread, just as an example. I'm going to hold a note down. I don't want the initial data to be learned, but I'm going to hold a note down hit learn, and then push a little harder to engage that extra MIDI control. Turn off learn. Watch that over there as I push a little harder. So we have that controlled. Let's also have resonance learned as well. Now you'll see because of the way logic works, it is only able to assign one thing at a time. And we can put it back to the original either by assigning it here with the learn. Let's turn the resonance down. Or by simply coming in here and deleting it. And then it will default back to how it was originally. Let's set this back to about 50. So you can do this with any instrument that you want. Okay, so one other thing I like to do is use aftertouch to control the dynamics on my stringed instrument. However, because aftertouch isn't exactly controlled data right off the bat, it's a little bit separate. We actually have to convert it into something that this instrument can use. Super easy, let me show you how to do this real quick. We're gonna come into our MIDI environment and make sure that you're on the clicks and ports page up here. Now I'm going to come through, create a new transformer we're going to delete all the cables and just go straight from the keyboard into the transformer. Let's make a monitor, transformer into monitor, monitor into the sequencer. Now I'm doing it in this order so that the monitor, we can see exactly what's happening with it. So let's double click on the transformer. And now here's the trick with this. We're going to say status equals C press, that's the aftertouch. We're gonna fix that into control. And data byte, we're gonna fix to channel one or the controller one. So this is taking the aftertouch and making it into a continuous controller number one. We'll verify that over here. And actually, we can actually start to hear that already. So let's close that, 
open up our instrument, you'll see modulation number one, dynamics are on. When I hold a chord now, It's a little tricky to master, but it's a really cool way to be able to add that additional dynamics control in the aftertouch. Keep in mind, you only need to do it on one note, and so you can you don't have to like be able to do that with all your fingers. Just focus on which one you want to do in the chord and use that to control the volume. That way you don't exhaust all of your fingers at once. You can just use your left hand with the bass notes or something like that. Okay, I hope this was a little bit interesting just dealing with aftertouch. It's a great feature. When you buy a keyboard, make sure that if it's something you want that you verify that it has it. And then start controlling your instruments in a new way.